This is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. And in this episode, we're going to look at King Saul. We just saw where Israel was doing what was right in their own eyes in the book of Judges. And there was no king in Israel. Israel would get away from God and go after other gods. And this would cause God to raise up an adversary against them. Then they would cry out to God. God would be moved by their prayers and send them a deliverer. And that was the judges. Now Israel disobeyed the Lord over and over. They got right over and over. And then they eventually asked for a king. And this isn't a good thing. They wanted a king for the wrong motive. So God gives them King Saul. Saul was little in his own sight at first. He was humble at first. But he, he was head and shoulders above all the men of Israel. He began to be an egomaniac. Someone like this is easy for the devil to knock off because the Bible says pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now Saul ends up trying to kill David. And David is who God wants on the throne. David is from the right tribe. He's from the tribe of Judah. As you know, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is from Judah. That's the right line. Saul is not from the right line. So the devil gets in Saul and has him attempt to kill David over and over again. Saul, like many rulers, kings, presidents of modern day, is a devil-possessed puppet. Just like the men you see in leadership today, devil possessed first uh, samuel sixteen fourteen. but the spirit of the lord departed from saul and an evil spirit from the lord troubled him and as you know saul ends up going to the witch of endor for advice because he can't get anything from god anymore just like many uh, rulers kings presidents today might consult with the so-called dead or with witches and there's uh, all kinds of first ladies that you can look up that had contact with the dead, like Hillary Clinton, or claims that they had contact with the dead, or a, it was actually a devil. But there is nothing new under the sun. You see these kings dabbling into Satanism in the Old Testament, so you can expect it today. I mean, if evil men and seducers show wax worse and worse, wouldn't the men in power today be doing even more wicked things than they were doing in the Old Testament? But in 1 Samuel 28, 6 through 7, is when Saul is talking to that witch of Endor. He couldn't get anything from the Lord. He couldn't get anything from what Bible that he did have. He, t he didn't get anything from the preacher. He, he couldn't get nothing from Sermon Audio or anything. He was blind as a bat when it came to spiritual things because his eyes were blinded by the Lord. And it's just like when a lost man looks at the Bible, he just can't get it. As the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Saul ends up committing suicide in battle. He falls on his own sword. As the verse said, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And that's what did he fell. He fell on his own sword. So once again, the devil destroys the king of the kingdom of heaven because he's the former king of both kingdoms and he's just going through and killing the kings that are on this earth. And you'll notice something very different about Saul's relationship with the Holy Spirit compared to how it is in the New Testament. In 1 Samuel sixteen fourteen, it says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Today, if you've believed on Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God will never depart from you. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Colossians 1.27 says, To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. If you're saved, Jesus Christ lives in you. You're sealed unto the day of redemption. You can't lose the Holy Spirit. Saul lost the Holy Spirit. Another thing is, Saul is a picture of the Antichrist or the devil. And he goes at David in, in some of the same ways that the devil goes after man. 
First thing is, why did Saul begin to hate David? Well, back in 1 Samuel 18, 7, it says, And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. They were saying David has slain ten thousands, Saul just thousands. It was jealousy that drove Saul to hate David. The devil was jealous of Adam and Eve. Uh, the devil, as Lucifer, was king of both kingdoms at one, one time. He had a throne on earth during the gap. He falls, then enters Adam, and Adam is given dominion. He's king. He's given a crown. The old serpent looks around, and he sees that it's all Adam's now, and he's jealous. Saul was jealous of David. The devil is jealous of man. And most of all, he's jealous of Jesus Christ and wants to sit on the throne that is rightfully his. Jesus Christ is, is going to be the one on the throne. It's rightfully his. The devil wants to sit on that throne. Another thing is Saul puts a woman in David's life to be a stumbling block to him. In 1 Samuel 18, 20 through 21, it says, And Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. And they told Saul, and the thing pleased him. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snare to him. The devil will many times put a woman in a man's life to be a snare to him, or the other way around. Saul is just like the devil in many ways. Uh, the devil tries to put the great whore, the Roman Catholic Church, in the way of the true church. They got the same tricks. Saul acts like he is David's friend on occasion and then throws a javelin at him. Picturing the devil who shows up as an angel of light to you, makes sin look pretty like he did to Eve, showed her the tree, showed her that the fruit was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise. But then, after you commit the act, you see the fangs. You see the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's what Saul is like. That's what the devil's like. That's what the Antichrist is like. Remember, he comes in peaceably, obtains the kingdom by flatteries. But then what happens? The fangs come out. Saul is an egomaniac. The devil is an egomaniac. Saul has a sword and doesn't make sure his people has one. Uh, the devil knows the Bible is a sword and doesn't want anyone to know which Bible is the true sword. He doesn't want you to have a sword. 1 Samuel 13, 22 says, So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and Jonathan, his son was there found. So Saul had a sword, but he didn't make sure the people had a sword. Many pastors know the truth about the King James Bible, but they don't make sure that their people know the truth about the King James Bible. Saul was a good guy gone bad. Lucifer was a good guy turned into the devil. The similarities are endless. In 1 Samuel 13, what, once again, if you've seen a previous video, watch out for the 13s. It is the number of rebellion and associated with the Antichrist. See Revelation 13. Uh, Saul offers an offering when he isn't supposed to because Samuel the priest is supposed to do that, but this is Saul pretending to be all religious and spiritual when he's really not at all. Just like the Antichrist will pretend to be spiritual and religious. However, he will he really just wants you to worship him and doesn't care about true spiritual things of God or pure religion. So that's King Saul.